Hello, and welcome back to Game Review. My name is Caleb Denby, and today we're going to be going over a World Championship Candidates game against one of the youngest grandmasters in history. So we'll see how uh, somebody at the top level of chess it does against someone who's up and coming, perhaps a future top 10 player. Uh, of course, I'm talking about this game between Wang Hao and Pragananda Ramesh, or yeah, just Pragananda, we'll, we'll, we'll call him. That's his last name, I believe, but uh, I get confused on these things. The game went c4 for Wang Hao, e5, knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6, e3, bishop b4, queen c2, bishop takes c3, b takes c3. Uh, so some opening decisions have already been made. This is an opening line that has been tried many, many, many times. Uh, Carlson has played this with white. Uh, people like Topolov, Sergei Karyakin, Levon Aronian have all played it with black. And the idea is... Black trades off this bishop, which on the, is on the same color as his pawns, uh, takes away some control of this d5 square for, uh, for white. Meanwhile, white has doubled his pawns, but this gives him a little bit more central control than, uh, than before. Uh, in this case, though, black just plays d6, white now plays e4, taking advantage of this c3 pawn, boxing out this knight a little bit. Black castles, we see g3. White choosing this diagonal for the bishop, uh, as the c4 pawn is kind of in its, in its way over here. Knight d7 is black's choice, perhaps rerouting to the c5 square, perhaps freeing up some potential f5 breaks. Bishop g2, this knight does come to c5. Now we see knight h4 for white, perhaps eyeing the potential f5 break. Uh, a6 is black's choice. Things like b5 are going to come for black. He's kind of committed to these knights being on this queen side here, so it makes sense for him to want to expand on this side of the board. Uh, white castles. Black does continue with b5. We see uh, not cb5, which has been played historically, but instead d4 following a game of Peter Svidler's uh, with black. e takes d4, c takes d4. This knight is attacked. And then black laughs at white and says, ha ha, you hung a pawn, you're so stupid. Uh, white says, okay, I apologize, and plays queen b2, uh, attacking this knight and, and getting some activity. Uh, the point of this pawn sacrifice, of course, is that this e5 pawn has now been removed. And with the removal of this e5 pawn, it of course allows white an opportunity here. That opportunity is to play e5 himself opening up this bishop on the long diagonal. This was the point of the sacrifice for white. Of course, he didn't just hang a pawn. He sacrificed it to open up these diagonals for this bishop. Uh, now, you might be tempted to play bishop b7, which is a fine move, but white will simply start regaining some pawns here, play a move like cb5, and after ab5, uh, queen takes b5 uh, is potentially playable, but you can also play stuff like knight f5, uh, already threatening some annoying checkmates. So instead, we actually see bishop d7, because of this knight f5 move, it now keeps an eye on both of these things. Uh, white still continues with e takes d6, we see c takes d6, and now queen d2 is white's choice, eyeing this d6 pawn now. Uh, black simply plays rook to c8, adding some extra defense uh, to this c6 knight. Once again, you can take on d6, but perhaps you're selling yourself, yourself a bit short. Uh, Black's now going to reroute the knight and find some activity with this c4 square. Uh, so instead of queen d6, white first captures on b5, and now perhaps black should have recaptured. You know, it, it's usually a good idea in chess when your opponent takes your pieces for you to take them back. Uh, Prague, however, wanted to be a little bit more ambitious, and actually played this move knight e5 here. And this move is kind of uh, asking for trouble. Uh, white accepts this kind of sacrifice and takes on a6. And the point of uh, Pragananda was to play bishop b5. He thinks he's definitely going to regain this pawn with no trouble. And now he gets to kind of play with these pieces a little bit. Kick around these major pieces for white and try and create some awkward threats. Uh, Wang Hao simply brings this rook to d1. And now this bishop comes to a4, once again hitting this rook, so it comes to e1 now. But now, Prague plays knight c to d3, once again hitting this rook. So this rook comes back to f1, where it originally started. 
And while Prague has succeeded in pushing around these, these uh, major pieces, specifically the Rook uh, of Longhouse, he hasn't really achieved anything by this. You might claim that these pieces have been improved by this positioning, but actually they're, they're a little bit loose. They're a little bit susceptible to some threats that Wang Hao is going to create because they're a little overextended, actually. And so I think this whole maneuver with bishop b5 to a4, bringing the knight to d3, while white has in fact just moved this rook around for the past four moves, I think black might have actually weakened his position with all of this. And so now, rook c2 was an, an additional point for Prague, kicking around a major piece once again. This queen comes to e3. But now, in fact, you have to be a little bit careful of things, maybe even like f4, uh, hitting this knight and preparing to, uh, to create some nasty threats against this knight. Uh, in the game, uh, Prague plays knight c5, just actually retreating the knight uh, to c5 because of some of these threats. And in fact, this is actually now kind of a waste of time for Black. He brought this knight to d3 with tempo, but now he brings it back to c5 without tempo. And this allows Wang Hao to try and hold on to this pawn a little bit longer, plays this move a5, and uh, Prague brings this bishop back to c6, keeping an eye on the a8 square. We do in fact see a trade of bishops, and now after queen f3, uh, Prague is still eyeing this a8 square. You can play a move like knight takes a7, but in fact this knight's going to be a little bit out of play, and you're allowing white some time to play a move like knight f5. This is really the key move in the position for white. It eyes the king, as well as this weak d6 pawn. So you don't really want to waste all your time putting this knight on a7. So instead we see the much more active move, knight d4. Uh, I think this one's good. Uh, we see knight d f or queen d5 in, in return. Knight e2 check, hits the king. The king comes to g2. And now knight c3 turns out to be a kind of fatal mistake for, for Prague here. And it's a little bit difficult to understand why. But once again, we see Prague kind of succumbing to the temptation to push around this white queen or this white rook. Uh, when in fact, what he's done here is actually improve the white queen. And you really wouldn't expect that. You would expect d5 to be the ideal square for the queen. But in fact, in this case, f3 is actually a better square. And there's a very specific reason for that. And we'll see that after queen a8, this knight comes to f5, and very naturally, uh, black can capture this a7 pawn. But now uh, the point is kind of revealed as to why f3 is a bit better than d5. And the reasoning is absolutely clear uh, after white's next move. Uh, now white did not find this move in the game, but he had actually a very nice opportunity to kind of end the game on the spot. I'll let you at home try and find the devastating tactic. Uh, but, uh, okay, pause the video now if you want to try to find it. We'll see it in just a moment here. Of course, the move is bishop to h6. Uh, this move is simply devastating. And this point I'm talking about, from d5, this queen would not have a way to get to the g file. But from f3, we do have queen g4 and queen g7 if, white were, if black were to capture this bishop. And this is kind of the devastating point. And there's simply no good way to respond to this threat uh, for black. You can play queen a8, queen a8, I'm simply going to capture this pawn. And after a trade of queens in rook e8, uh, this is simply uh, kind of hopeless for, uh, for black. Uh, you do maybe get this pawn back, but all these threats around the black king are going to be far too much to handle. So bishop h6 would have been the nice finish to the game. Uh, well, the game wouldn't end on the spot per se, but the end game is just completely hopeless. Uh, instead though, uh, Wang Hao played the simple bishop f4, which is giving black a little bit of an opportunity to hold on for a little bit. Perhaps black should have played knight 3 to e4, uh, defending this pawn a little bit. And now, maybe bishop h6 is still playable, but it comes with much uh, less devastating effect due to this knight g5 idea here. And black might be holding on. Uh, instead, though, Prague played knight e6, which is simply allowing too much with bishop takes d6. Now knight g5, this queen comes to c6, and after queen a8, Wang Hao is not shy in entering this rook endgame, uh, because this, well, rook and minor piece endgame, because this endgame is actually quite nice. Uh, after a3, this extra pawn is a little bit too tough to deal with for Prague. Uh, he plays knight g to e4, hitting this bishop. Uh, Wang Hao actually plays rook a to c1, and we see some trades go into effect after g6. 
Knight e7 check. King f8 is his choice. You can come to e5, but now you'll be hit with a bishop e5 check. And it takes, and it takes. And this endgame is, is not going to be pleasant. Uh, instead, he comes to f8, where you find knight takes g6 check anyways, and after king g7, uh, this knight actually comes back to h4. Black does take this opportunity to get rid of this annoying bishop, but at the end of the day, while black does regain this pawn on a3, the fact is this endgame is very, very difficult for black. And the reason is, yes, white's up a pawn, that's not always enough in these types of endgames, but more importantly than that is his king. Uh, this king is going to be pinned to the back rank thanks to this glorious, glorious knight, and together, this knight and this rook are going to create some very, very awkward threats around this king. And you see rook c7 now, and this is really the, the problem for, for black. Knight h6 is always going to be a threat to pick up this f7 pawn. If this rook ever leaves the back rank, of course, there's a checkmate. And the only way to really try and even remotely solve these problems is you have to play rook f8. And you can see now the, the crushing advantage in activity that this extra pawn grants white. Of course, in the end game, the king is a fighting piece. So this rook, or this knight and this rook are both already extremely active pieces. So Wang Hao activates his final piece with king f3. And now king e3. We see a check, king f4. This knight comes to d2. And now simply f3. Guarding the e4 square, this rook does return to f8 to defend against that threat. h4, king h8, h5, king g8. Black just has to pass. Uh, Wang Hao takes all of the space in the position and now plays knight h6. And after king g7, simply king g4. And you can see this might be coming, but after knight f1, knight f5 check, king g8, rook d7. White doesn't even have to commit to something like f4, f5, and f6, because this knight is simply in an inescapable box. Uh, as soon as you move this rook away, I'm going to play knight h6 check and collect this pawn. And if you don't move this rook away, I'm going to ever so slowly come capture your knight. And that is why, after rook d7, uh, Pragananda resigned. Uh, so this was actually a very impressive game from Wang Hao. He, he found this extra pawn, and then he turned it into this activity advantage, and he really didn't let off the gas and uh, showed Prague uh, what he's made of, showed Prague why he is in the candidates in this upcoming 2020 uh, tournament. Uh, of course, I think Wang Hao is actually the underdog to look out for for the candidates. So keep an eye on him as he plays some very interesting chess games, some very nice chess games, uh, as his chess career continues. Uh, as always, my name is Caleb Denby, and I'd like to thank you for joining me on this episode of Game Review.